I am unashamed. What about you? All right, so teal season has begun. I scheduled an event. Which is why you have the face paint on. Yeah. Well, it's because I went teal hunting this morning. Thanks for the clarification. If you're well, just now I didn't know figuring, if you were trying to do blackface or what. I just want to make out. sure we... No, I just <laughs> went with it. I hadn't had any sleep, and I'll tell you why. Because I hunted opening day, and then I get up, and my in-laws drive me to Stephenville, Texas. I did an event. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. Black, Black Lives Matter would uh. see your face paint <laughs> and say... He's moving over on our side. Yep. And you know what? It's a start. I'm, I guess I, I've gone on matters. record to say, which some people got offended one time, but it's true. I said, look, the way I look, I've been a victim of facial profiling, facial profiling my entire life because people who don't know me, they think, well, he doesn't shave, so he's a threat. And they clutch their little children and they lock their doors and they... <laughs> Call nine one one, and when I just which, come walking by, which I totally get, and uh, and so I don't notice in Jesus. I will say this again. He made me colorblind. That, that's one of the things you know when we talk about seeing the unseen, because you know when you read all the verses, what is seen is temporary, what is unseen is eternal. Because we look at the heart of the matter. You know, God told us that. Well, what's interesting is the opposite is also true. What other people see, which is the color of the skin and the difference, in Christ, you don't see that, which I think is kind of cool. True. If, if you think about it. Very good. And, and I have a great illustration of that because when I went to this event, my wife was going to meet us, meet up with us. Did, you, did I hear you say you rode with your in-laws? I did, and uh, which well, was that's... crazy. <laughs> Look, you know what the first thing... And you rode a long way with your animals. Six and a half hours. And I haven't seen them in a couple months. Oh, yeah, because Because they've been quarantined right. in New Mexico. But Missy, Missy's the one lined this up. I, she was in South Texas. She said, I'll meet you there. She's just going to head north. You ride with my parents, because they were going to give her a ride back to South Texas when all the smoke was settled. Because... You got to realize we I have a dual citizenship going. Yeah. Well, after you know a couple of days, you start missing the wife. She starts missing me. It's one of the glorious things of having a godly marriage, mm -hmm. passion, desire, dot dot dot, whatever. And so we had a plan. So I'm I'm going, and when as soon as I got in the vehicle, and because of the separation, you're going along with this plan because well, I, I'm pretty sure in a normal setting, you and Missy are together without this, you know romantic interlude coming you yeah. would have never done this what, what i'm you not did. sure where the 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 her parents you got don't involved. even like to drive with somebody in town that's true but it's teal season so i'd gotten up early the day before and i was going to want to get back which you know i got back at midnight and then i went hunting this morning so when you start looking at all this i hadn't had much sleep so she was worried about me driving by myself okay and so, so it was a safety So issue. she lined that up, which I was fine. You. But look, you know what's interesting? As soon as I got in the vehicle, you know what the first thing they brought up was? You're not going to believe this. The dishwasher. <laughs> Larry said, <laughs> I heard. It keeps coming up. <laughs> he said, I heard you fix the dishwasher. <laughs> and he did his laugh. Yeah. I was like, Missy told you about that? <laughs> like, yeah. He said, I mean. It's still on the look, center block. <laughs> he said, so what I don't understand, I hadn't, I hadn't seen him in two months. <laughs> And said, that's the lead. Yeah, and he said, what I don't understand is why don't you just cover up the cinder block? And I said, I'll tell you why. I hadn't thought about it, but I thought for a second. I thought, because I want everybody to know that I did that. <laughs> He's, now listen, You're proud of us. He so hasn't well. seen the dishwasher, so I'm, I'm deducting. She told him the story. Because look, you know what the next thing he said? He said, well, why didn't you at least wash the cinder block? I thought, because I thought no one would notice the dirt. I mean, we have a broken dishwasher. <laughs> Who's going to notice a little dirt on the center blocks? I have nowhere I'm going with that. I just thought, <laughs> What this I'm is... thinking is, you've developed a story which, which 
riding around with your in-laws is true. It is nightmarish <laughs> if we're discussing what a dishwasher said. No, I didn't say it was nightmarish. You said that. They brought up the dishwasher, and I said, well, you know, I'm not good at fixing things. And, and he said, yeah. I said, but I did fix it, and I was proud of it, but maybe you're right. I should have, going back and thinking about it, I should have thought of the, uh, what's those little things they put under the houses that I never figured out why people do it? Uh, the lattice. Yeah. Because what, what does that do? It's like I could break one. You know, they, it's like, oh, I'm going to put some lattice around my house. Like, they hadn't lived with critters. <laughs> that's not going to work. <laughs> well, but. that's right. So we, did, but, we wouldn't do lattice here. But... Okay, I should have done something like that. Well, you but, said something about putting some curtains or something. Well, I've, so, always, I've always thought, Al, if you built a tower, a cool tower, and used duct tape to make the tower, well, the last thing you want, would want to do is not show that you used duct tape. That would be the cool part. <laughs> I built a tower yeah. out of duct tape. It's skewed thinking, but we'll overlook it. <laughs> okay. So, so before we leave that, so I was just sitting there thinking when you said that, Lisa and I have been married thirty this thirty six years this this year. Oh, wow! And my in laws are they're gone now. They're in the Lord, in the Lord. And but I I was just thinking when you were saying that I thought about it, did I ever go anywhere? Did I ever yeah. ride in a vehicle with my in laws? And I never did. Look, <laughs> but this I was think the that's first how time. I maintained I never a relationship. Had <laughs> Look, this was the first time without Missy that I was alone in a vehicle with them. For six and a half hours, and uh, it was it was comical because you know they they have yuppie tendencies, and it was fascinating on what yuppies do on a road trip. And what I noticed is they do the opposite of everything I do. <laughs> they stop where that I would never stop. Surprise me. I would never stop here. <laughs> We're stopped. You know, we after the event, I had me a little cooler. And I had me some some cold cuts and some cheese and some bread, and because Larry I at the event, I, I it was like four o'clock. We had, we've eaten nothing. Yeah. I mean, we've been on the road. I had to go. We did a meet and greet, you know. And he's like, he he looked at me in the green room and he said, "I'm starving to death." <laughs> I said, "Oh, I forgot to tell you, I don't eat <laughs> before I speak." <laughs> Sorry, because <laughs> he was looking around for something to eat. He thought well, sometimes they'll have a little food in the well, and they didn't. And uh, they had a little, few little candy bars. I noticed he was hammering that. <laughs> he, he had no sugar. I thought well, that's good because he got to drive back home. Oh, that's right. But uh, so what? What? What I was telling you was this event. What? What got me, you know, thinking was I was surprised that during the coronavirus we were doing an event, and I knew it wasn't going to be over two hundred people because they have the yeah. edicts. Social but what this moment. was was a foster home with counseling that helps kids who basically, and I met all the kids, or I met a hundred of them that were there. And uh, you know what 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 stories they told? They spoke before I did some of them, and uh, it was very touching. And I realized something that there's a lot of things out there a lot more important than the coronavirus and in this situation. And they were from all different backgrounds and colors and creeds. And so I got up and just felt a connection with them. And what I did was when we did the meet and greet, I wrote the gospel symbol because they all wanted a picture. So I'd take a group picture with the family, whoever their family Providers or sponsors. Did you have to call. stand six feet away from them? Or did you well, they all came in with mask on, and I said, "Look, if y'all want to wear the mask, because I didn't have one on." I said, "That's fine." I said, "If you don't want to, if you're if you're only wearing the mask because of me, I said I'm not worried about it. what what you have going on in your lives is way more important than whether we get the virus. I don't want the virus, so but don't think you have to because of me." When I said that, all the kids took their mask off. They looked around. And, <laughs> So the adults kept theirs on. I said I did the but. same thing yesterday. There were five people came from Arkansas to get baptized, and so they got there early, and so they were like, well, five people are here to be baptized, and, but there was nobody around. I said, well, says, bring them up to my office, because you know, I'm going to explain to them mm. you know, what baptism is about and all that, and just meet them. And so they all came in with the mask. Of course, again, I didn't have one on. I said, look, if, if you're wearing that for me, you don't have to wear it. But if yeah. you're wearing it for you, I don't, I don't mind. 
and they and they all took their masks. Well, off. I want to stress this because a lot that may offend a lot of people. But look, these people have some of them, you know, have murders for parents and people in prison and their own drugs. And they've been abused and they've been used by their parents for just oh. And I'm like, you know what? If you view me as risking my life to try to help you turn this into something positive in your life, so be it. I'm not worried about that at this moment. This is way more important, and we're going to trust God. Which is exactly what I thought about because I knew in two hours, hour and a half to two hours, I'm going to be standing in the baptistry we'll grabbing a hold of them without a mask. So, There's just some things know. in life that are more important, exactly. and, and I'm not going to worry about that. So, so what I wanted to tell you is, though, so when I signed my autograph, which is embarrassing, but they're kids, and I did notice this. I would say half those kids mentioned this podcast. Really? I was shocked. So it, it made me feel good. Now, I don't know if the center is encouraging that or somebody heard it and said, yeah, you got to listen to they're just guys. finding it. A lot of young, we have a lot of young fans. Well, I asked one kid because he said, I love Unashamed. And I said, really? He was one of the first ones that said that. I said, what's the number one thing you get out of it? And he said, Laughter. <laughs> and I didn't know what he meant. I thought, <laughs> laughter. I said, Oh, you think it's funny? I said, Well, it's not really designed to be funny. I don't he said, Oh no, it's funny. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. But I said, Which, okay. by the way, was the number one thing for Duck Dynasty. Was laughter. Well, I mean, so. that it's it's the same thing. Well I mean, they were okay. spiritual concepts, but people enjoyed the show because it made them laugh. Well, he must be laughing at you, Phil, because I, I didn't so I, so what I did His dad, was, he's a funny man. I wrote down the arrow pointing down, <laughs> the cross, the tomb, the arrow pointing up, and the arrow pointing back down. And I put Jesus as Lord, and I signed it, Jace. Every one of them, I did that one hundred times. Right. Well, every one of them said, "Well, what what is that?" And I said, "Well, when I speak here in a few minutes, I'm going to explain that to you." Well, one kid who was. Multiracial. I'm not, you know, yeah. he had he had like a blonde streak on his hair. Good looking, athletic kid, you know. He's probably 14 or 15. He said, now what is that? And I said, well, I'm going to explain it when I speak. He said, well, what if you forget? I said, well, i tell you what. I said, when I start talking, I said, I go through there. I'll, you know, I'll talk a few minutes. And toward the end, if you think that I've forgotten, which I could, I said, I want you to raise your hand. I said, am I being embarrassed? And he's like, oh, no, I, I, I'm on it. I said, okay. He's unashamed. Yeah. And so I told another kid that later. We had the same kind of conversation. So here's what's funny. I go up there, and when I, so I get up to speak, and I had Googled. Uh, I keep forgetting where I went. Where did I tell you? Stevensville, yeah, Texas. Yeah, St- Stevensville. I don't know why I remember it, but you, yeah. can't, you can't remember So I Googled that two <laughs> minutes before. I got up because I thought, because Larry come in there and said, are you ready? And I said, ready for what? I I didn't know what he was talking about. He's like, well, you're fixing to speak. I was like, oh, I just have one speech. I'm good. Thank you. I'm always ready. But then I thought, well, maybe I'll look up Stephenville, see if there's anything interesting. So I Googled Stephenville and only one thing come up. They were famous because in 2008, they spotted a, a UFO. And it was like national news. I mean, these people were convincing. They were interviewed. They were like, oh, we saw it. You know, it was a big, long, whatever. And so when I said that, I said, I Googled. Well, I got up there and said, how many of y'all duck hunt? About three people raised their hand out of 200. I was like, well, the rest of you people eat. The number one answer was beef and deer. I mean, beef was number one and deer. And I was like, oh, that's why y'all look kind of like Willie. Which was a joke. Pretty funny. But they were, you know, they were healthy. (laughs) (laughs) Hang hang on, Jesus, take a break. (laughs) So uh, we've talked about this before, Dad. When you uh, when you preach, you wear your armor. I mean, we got the armor of 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 God. We're talking about from Ephesians six, but you actually wear some other armor, body armor, right? I I was coached by the local. SWAT team members. Yep. They all said we all wear body armor. Yeah. We we, we 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 hope for the best, but right. 
that's what you need. It's crazy do. that we're living in a time where you feel that. like you have to have so that I said, to preach. Whatever you guys mm-hmm. say. So we've got a, a new sponsor on the podcast, AR Five Hundred Armor. And let me tell you something. These guys have something loaded for bear. Feel that thing right there. Let me oh, talk yeah. about stop. Oh, you put that in inside this yeah. vest, right? Exactly. You'd rather a bullet stop right there than go slam through you. That's exactly right. Every it, time I see this, I think about that Clint Eastwood movie. Remember when the guy he was like the greatest rifle shooter oh, ever, yeah. and he was shooting him, and he kept getting up. He shoot. Oh, him, Clint made, made, made it made a little. Yeah. He made his own and armor. That, he yeah. took he took out. To go to his poncho, and there was like five bullet holes. <laughs> that was, a, and they got a backpack. It's got one inside there, you know, protect your back. We're just pretty cool. Uh, so anyway, these guys uh, make some great uh, products, and so we're excited about having them on the podcast. So here's what you do if you want to check them out. AR500 Armor, that's their name, AR500Armor.com slash Phil. And they've got some offers here for since they're new to the podcast. First one is if you... Uh, if you go to them now, you get 30% off their Get Started package. So that includes several different things that you'll see on their website. You use the code Phil, you get 20% off of everything else in the store. So you can really save some money if you check these guys out. AR500Armor.com slash Phil. So I do Help. this little deal. Every speech I give, I was like, look at Willie. I say, TV makes you look bigger. So when people see me, they're like, boy, you've lost weight. No, this is the way I've always looked. (laughs) The problem is ducks are appetizers. That's what I'm after. I was like, now, when you get into deer, you got all you can eat buffet. That's what, see, Willie's a big deer hunter. He just looked at the, what he could eat and said, I'm going with the deer. There was a few chuckles. I thought, tough crowd. Because I thought that was one of my better jokes. (laughs) And it just, so then I said, I Googled Stephenville, and guess what up? And guess what came up? Y'all saw a UFO. They all roared. Wet, just the place come down. So I you thought, found? oh, I've hit a nerve. <laughs> and I said, I knew I was in the right place. <laughs> I said, because I got an uncle just like you. His name is Cy. Oh, they're falling now, out of their chair. You're All now you got to do is mention size name and people that's right. start laughing. I get the same reaction. So that was my connection. And so look, so I look to the left, I see a hand up. I thought, what's this kid got? And I'm like, oh, that's my kid. <laughs> I'm like three minutes into it. He got that hand up. I thought, okay, this is going to get awkward. I'm going <laughs> to have to go right to the explanation. I said, see this guy over here? I said, he's got his hand up. I said, here's why. And I went through yeah. the sign, you know, Jesus, the arrow, Jesus coming down. He died on a cross. He was buried. He was raised. And he's coming back. There's two kinds of people, those who are ready and those that will be surprised. I mentioned the first Thessalonians 5. So I started the speech. I explained the Bible in less than 60 seconds. I mean, and we just kind of went from there. And then I said, how many of y'all love Jesus? And it was, it was a more raucous response than everything else, but it wasn't raucous enough for me. So I, you know, I was like, hey, we're going to heaven. Let, let's act like it. And I think at that point, the crowd kind of changed, and, and it was a really good event. And then I just focused on the kids. But when I got back to the end with Jesus, and this is what I wanted to say, is that I said, look, I got three questions for you. I've done this many times on the podcast. How'd you get here? Because I wanted those kids to know you're made in the image of God. I don't care what anybody told you, what your parents told you, or what you're made in the image of God. You're a masterpiece. And, of course, there was a few amens. The kids were just, because that's what they need to hear. They've been told to junk, you know, their whole life. You're here to share Jesus. I introduced him to you. You go back, read the book of John, see what you think about him. I think you'll fall in love with him. Now you know what your purpose is. Go share him. That's what I'm doing to y'all. I told them about my biggest weakness being public speaking. Well, they all laugh. I was like, God takes your weakness and turns it into his strength. That's what I'm doing here. And so then I said, well, how are you leaving? Well, nobody knew the answer to that. So I paraphrased Acts 1, flying. I said, see, I believe in an IFO. And they're all looking. I, I said, IFO. Nobody, I said, what is an IFO? Nobody got Nobody, it. they were just looking. I saw a couple of them look at their phones. I was like, <laughs> oh, you're Googling IFO? <laughs> I said, it's 
an identified flying object. <laughs> In this case, <laughs> it's a being, and his name is Jesus. That's the how I we're have, leaving uh, the earth. So I went out and had a prayer with him for the kids, you know, and then I came back another six and a half hours riding back. But here's what I found out about my in-laws. It's a lot like me and my wife. We only have one thing in common. Jesus, a love for Jesus. And the, and their daughter and your wife. I mean, that's two things in common. Well, okay, technically, I guess so. But if I hadn't had that one thing in common with her, I wouldn't. that well, would have never that's, happened. That's true. But you're right. And so we come back. They stayed away. I made it three or four hours sleep. We go teal hunting this morning, and I just knew we were going to get them because they shot three while I was gone Sunday morning, right? Three, three singles. Three singles, which I didn't feel too bad because I'm like, well, they killed everything that come in. Because Saturday we killed nothing. Right. But I thought, man, I was doing the Lord's work, preaching Jesus. Well, it's just selfish. I shouldn't have been doing that. But this morning in time, the wind was blowing, and I thought, I just cannot believe I did all this to get back, <laughs> and we got nothing. Yeah. And then at 7.45, we heard the sound. Which is pretty late for... Way late. That the, the prime time is 6.45, 7.15, depending on what time zone you're in. So at 7.45, we heard the sound that makes all of our hair stand up on the back of our neck. It's something like this. Feels like Everybody starts talking in gibberish. It's like a little Holy Spirit breakout in the blind. It, it's that. You know, and, everybody, and everybody's like, don't move. And it's everybody's moving. Don't move, don't move. Don't move. Shaking the string. The cameraman clanking around because we had a camera. So I look the up. The duck's going. They just came over. And they're going so fast, straight down. And look, they go down there about a 75 yards, 100 yards below us, and just hook hard right. Yeah. Here, they come. Here they come. I told Jay, I said, Jay, get ready. Here they come. Yeah, and they, they came. They got scattered out. So I was just hoping that nobody would jump the gun. But it's only, I mean, we had the professionals there. You got me, Jay, and Phil. And Cy, who is a professional, but he's he's liable to he's, do anything at any any moment. He, he gets a, a little antsy. He's a loose cannon <laughs> shocker. Shocker. So I was like, please don't shoot, please don't shoot. Because I was waiting for them all to get in there because this is my first bunch of the year. And I went, because I watched the, the they filmed it. So I, I didn't know what I said, but I said, all right. <laughs> I've never said that before. <laughs> I said, all right. And we boom, 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 boom. And I hadn't shot since last year i went boom one boom two boom three of course i was seeing them right on my left eye too and what's funny is when they all were down you only get three shots so i said well i went three? five no five for three <laughs> we didn't pick up at six there was eight we <laughs> shot six and so i said i got five for three we got a man claiming ducks i said well wow that's pretty m so he's not even claiming just one now he's claiming two per shot yeah so it was awesome i mean what's funny is i told phil i was like it's probably the most tired i've ever been you know last night when i got home it was it was 11 whatever almost midnight and I, cause I figured my wife, she's in the bed cause she's like, yeah, okay. I'm see you when you get back. But I thought that meant I'm going to bed <laughs> and I was literally delirious. And I walked in, I was like, this is the most tired I've ever been, you know? And so I'm like, I'm on the way to my bedroom and my phone goes off and it was from my wife. And uh, she's like, can't wait till you get here. I was like, well, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Calling you but, from the bed. But Good I, sign. I thought I'm so tired that I, I I literally it's all I can do just to get to the bed. And I so I, I got there and I'm like, I wasn't as tired as I thought I was. <laughs> the only difference between what he just said and the reality of the situation, I told him what he told us that tale this morning. I said, Jace, let me explain something. You're fifty. I'm 74. I said, when you get to be 74 and you're dog tired, it doesn't make any difference when you look at your woman and she's clothed or not clothed. You're still tired. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's the difference between 54 and 74. So when you were 50. I just so. want to give him some encouragement. When you words. were 50, there would have been a spark that you well, weren't right. that tired. Like, like, Whoa, I'm not I tired thought, anymore. Well, I thought, I thought These I days, tired. I'm like, I'm tired when I got here, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm still tired. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not tired anymore. <laughs> Old age is creeping in. So we enjoy a good godly marriage. You know, that, it was God's idea, not mine. A lot of people, they're like, oh, we shouldn't talk about that. Well, God did. He, right. he, he designed it. Go for it. Which is interesting. Uh, let's take a break. So one of our favorite sponsors, Jace, is uh, Helix, which yes. uh, sent us some really great mattresses. I have four Helix I know. beds. You, you, one my son took, so they gave me three more. And, uh, oh, I tested it out, and I, two thumbs up. So uh, this company, not only do they make great mattresses that we talk about, but they've started another company uh, under their, their headship called Allform, and they make sofas, couches. Oh, okay. And so I have one, so we'll, I guess we'll have to see about getting you one. What about it? Uh, it's very, Get a it's, brother it's, up. It's, it's very awesome. And it's got like one little layout on the end. That's where Lisa hangs out, and then it's got like a regular couch. The rest you know, of I'm not, I've always been a couch man, never a chair man. I know. I like couches. You would you would do great. So we're going to we're gonna have to talk to the folks about getting you one. Yeah. Uh, looks great. Yeah. Um, because right, you on. never want to pick up a couch on the side of the road. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, Don't, there's a reason that it's there. Yeah. So if you want to try out one of these uh, sofas, uh, you, you you can 100 days, they're going to let you keep it and to make sure you love it. So well, that, that's, that's that's people that stand that's behind that product. risky in this neck of the woods. <laughs> Don't put it out by the dumpster, that's for sure. So And also they have, Jace, a forever warranty. Forever. Really? That's what it says. Forever warranty. So I guess they plan on going to heaven. They they plan on it. That's right. So check these guys out. All form A L L F O R M dot com slash unashamed. All form dot com slash unashamed. You're gonna get twenty percent off all orders just because you're an unashamed listener. Which is interesting because um you know, that's basically an adrenaline rush, you know, in, in a different sort of way. So yesterday I was preaching. At, uh, at WFR, and I was, I mean, I was so excited, but I, I woke up, I felt bad, because I've been having some sinus problems for a couple of weeks, I got an infection, and so I just, man, I, I was so excited about this text, because I was in John 11, you yeah. know, the resurrection and the life, I mean, just... And we had talked about We had talked the, about it on the podcast. Did you get all your material from the podcast? A lot of it I did, yeah. <laughs> I quoted you in it at the, at the end of it. I had a when I read about him coming out of the grave. I I did a oh. mummy walk oh, on stage. Yeah. You know, it was the first zombie apocalypse. <laughs> that's right. That's it lasted four days, and that got yeah. some huge laughs. Which yesterday yeah. was funny since the coronavirus at our church. You know, we've been just people are spread out in a big, huge room, and it's just been a hard audience to you know from a speaking standpoint or a worship standpoint. It's really hard because you're not getting much back from them. You know, it's just I don't know if it's spread out. People are tired. I don't know what it is. Now, in the other Nothing room, but their eyeballs showing. Well, a lot of them got masks. That's right. So, But yesterday we had, because the governor just, you know, now we're in phase three in Louisiana, so you can get 75% of your audience. Well, I didn't think. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it just happened. So I, I thought, well, that ain't going to make a difference because a lot of our people are watching from home anyway. But it did make a difference. We picked up about 150 people in the big oh, room. Okay. Well, that made a huge difference. Yeah. So I kind of felt bad, but I was so excited about this text, you know, so I'm just like praying, you know, give me a jolt of Holy Spirit, something, you know, because I just didn't feel well. And uh, so I go in there, Inman, Tommy Inman had preached the week before. And yeah, he, and he, I heard that. He one. did a joke about me at the beginning, he got up wearing a vest, and then he, and I was listening to it, I couldn't get the uh, the video on my thing, but I could hear the, the audio, so I didn't see it, but he took the vest off, and he said, well, I'm not like some guys, I don't have a gut to protect, or something like that, you know, he tapped me, oh. a good little thing, so he poked the bear, Yeah. so I had a whole little bit lined up for Emmon, which was a great way to start it, you know, well, first of all, there, there's a little scripture reader, she's 10 years old, and we have kids read scriptures, you know, and it was the tonnage's daughter. And she had helped with a hurricane. Just I always find out little interesting facts about them. So I said, well, what does she like to do? And so she, they send me this thing, because we do the scripture first. And it says she likes coloring and uh, something else. And then she wants to work at Stanley Steamer when she grows up. 
what? That's what it says. What? So when I when I said that, like she's coming up on stage, and I said, "This little girl helped with the hurricane." Everybody's clapping because now I'm, my adrenaline is, was the point I'm trying to make. I'm getting into it. You know, yeah. I, I don't forget about it. I got a science thing because now I'm in front of an audience, and I'm saying this. They all just start clapping for this little girl, and I said, "And by the way, she loves coloring and whatever else it was, and she wants to work at Stanley Steamer when she grows up." Well, it was just a roar of laughter. And then I said something like, now this girl knows where she wants to go. And she's a little yeah. bitty thing, you know? So that, so it's getting me Was going. A backstory to that? I don't know. I, I asked Sean about it, her dad, and he said, oh, she's serious about that. She, they got a Stanley well, steamer. like the they, iron they, they carpet, uh, to clean the carpet. Oh. So they got, they rented one and she was so fascinated Never. by it. She was like, I want to work for these people. Yeah. I was like, well, she knows what she wants to do. Yeah. So I get up <clears throat> and I'm like, so... The uh, I hear that Tommy Emmon decided to poke the bear, and so everybody starts laughing. When Emmon gets up like he's going to walk out, everybody starts laughing. But I'm getting them into it now. And I said, and not only that, he poked him right in the belly, and, and more laughter. So I said, but you know what? Lucky for Emmon, I'm like former First Lady Michelle Obama. When they go low, I go high. Of course, everybody laughs. And then I said, just like Emmon's voice. And then I went into a about a three minute rip well, on people Inman. who don't know Edmund, he has a tenor. I mean, a tenor's tenor. A tenor on on steroids. Yeah. I said, you know, I lost my video. I said I didn't know if I was listening to a sermon or an opera. And everybody <laughs>, laughs. So then I started imitating his voice. I mean, by now, size back there, just like I can hear him over everybody else. So by the time I get into that text, you know, I'm now I'm I'm ready. And the whole sermon between Kurt Lively, who we've mentioned on podcast before, and Cy, I could just hear a whole like I'm preaching, and I and I didn't I didn't stop, you know I didn't make m- mention of it, but the whole time I'm preaching, it's a dueling back and forth between Kurt Lively yelling Jesus and other things I couldn't make mm-hmm. out, and Cy, I could hear Cy. He's not as loud, but I can still hear him the whole time. He he could well, commentary. Si, yeah, <laughs> the my... last time I preached, so si I just he had a running commentary. That's what he did to me. The, and finally, I said, "Hey, let, let me let me do this." Because I because si, he you ask him to speak, and he's like, "No, I don't do that." But when you speak, right. he won't shut up. <laughs> Can't shut him up. <laughs> so I don't. Know, maybe that's why I'm named after him. Well, know? he's some kind of one man or two, two men amen section. Right. No, nah, but it is fun, I think, when people interact. That's why I love the event and the crowd I was at. I was going to say the other thing, the other adrenaline rush, I was I was so sleepy this morning in the duck blind, which never happens. But I just, and then he sleep. Right. But when those duck, when I, I have been floating on air. <laughs> it's like immediately, so it, it just shows you. When, when we're you, done with this podcast, though, you're going to crash and burn, isn't it? When the, when the burn... <laughs> <laughs> when the crash and burn hit, y'all want to say this about Tommy Emmon. The first time I met him, because people, they're like, who is Tommy Emmon? Because I played fast pitch softball, which is the equivalent to baseball. I mean, yeah, you do the close. same thing. You They're throwing the ball extreme. You know, I mean, they, it's it's hardball with a bigger ball. Right. And uh, somebody recruited him to come play one night because we didn't have somebody. Well, I, I didn't know who he was. That joker – can hit. He played I, college baseball. Yeah. yeah, I mean, first time he hit, I was like, "Oh my goodness!" It makes and, a whole other sound. Look, he turned around and went, "Hey, guy, what do you think of that one?" And I thought, <laughs> "Boy, that guy's got a high pitched voice." <laughs> and it was like I just see this manly shot, and then when he said that, I thought, "Well, this guy's weird." But that was my first impression. Of him. So when you said that, it's pretty. Well, funny. I sent him a I sent him a text after you know because I was just merciless, you know. And then I said. I said, you know, you got to come out of it at some point. And finally, I said, well, you know what? Wasn't a joke. It was in my sermon last week. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. I agree. So that kind of led me into that whole thing. But anyway, it was fun to do it. I, I, we'd like to do that back and forth. I do little funny videos about our other preacher. And it just makes it, you know, it makes it fun. Uh, I guess we need to get into Ephesians 6, right? Well, we introduced it maybe a couple of a podcast together. Yeah, yeah, I think it was the last one. And what we're going to do for our next it was podcast, a question, so. I wanted to give a teaser for our next podcast, which we'll have some guests, which you know. Which I'm super excited about. So we want you to listen to that. Uh, and, and really, we just, what, Zach, I think. Yeah, Zach, Zach first found them. It's two guys, their, their podcast is called Just Thinking. 
And uh, they've done about 100, just a little over 100 episodes, so not as many as us. But they have, their podcasts are long. They're like long form. They do an hour and a half to two to two and a half hour podcast. So but really, they just do basically one a week. Right, yeah, right. One, it's the same concept. But they're, they're a lot smarter guys than we are. But you know what's weird? Is we're from different parts of the country. We have different backgrounds, but we're all we're the different same. colors. <laughs> we're different color, which I didn't even know that when I listened to them. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I think that's what we one of the benefits of being in Christ is. You know, we are colorblind. I mean, it it doesn't matter. We we have this what we share in Jesus. Well, what I like about these guys is that they they go at it from the Bible just like we do. But then they talk probably more than we do about cultural issues. But I mean, it was just. They but you know so what rich. it is? Yeah, they do. They're not scared of any subject. No. And but what occurred to me is that they're unashamed. That's right. That, that's what brought us together. There's no. We weren't trying to promote them for any reason other than we just like we, what we found doing. some guys who are also unashamed and on the same page. So it'd be an interesting talk. Yep. Well, let's take a break. So the question was asked, what does COVID-19 have to do with losing your home? Uh, Stay in it so long, you finally just burn it down the road. <laughs> well, this says a lot. Uh, and the reason why is because the FBI has reported that since the virus struck, cybercrime is up 75%. Good night. More Hell people online. Know what cyber crime is. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds bad. <laughs> so basically, criminals get online, forge your signature, uh, and basically claim the deed to your house. And this has happened to a lot of people, unfortunately. So there's a company, Home Title Lock, that protects your home's legal title. So the way you get to find out about these guys is you go to hometitlelock.com, register your address, make sure you still own your home. You use the code Phil, you get 30 days of free protection. So that's hometitlelock.com, code name Phil, 30 days. Check it out. So Ephesians 6, somebody sent in a question and said they would like to hear what we thought about the armor of God. And um, and that's a great – so last time, I think Jay's kind of gave a 30,000 – Foot of the first three chapters, I believe. Yeah, I, I you know, and basically, and you're right, the book kind of breaks in two halves because the does. first half it's more of this is Christ, this is what we believe, this is you know he kind of gives the foundation, and then you get to four, five, and six, it's all application. It's here's how you live because of the first, you know, because of the gospel, because of Jesus. Here's how you live. So well, and look and think of all the passages that say that. You think about Romans twelve. One and two, everybody reads the part that says, don't conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed. But that whole, in Romans 12, it started saying, in view of God's mercy. And I believe it's Titus that says, you know, people say, well, just say no. That was famous thing, Nancy Reagan. Even just the, the Just Thinking podcast have a, have a just yeah, say yeah. no, uh, say no campaign. <clears throat> but it says the grace of God, I think it's Titus 2.14, mm -hmm. the grace of God. God's riches at Christ's expense. If you did the, what are those called? Anagram? Acronym? Acronym. I was close. Same words. And Anagram is the opposite, I think. Yeah. God's riches at Christ's expense, grace, unmerited favor from God, however you want to define it. That, in view of God's mercy, his love on a cross, that teaches us to say no. It's not about just saying no to worldly passions and concepts. That's what the book of Ephesians really sets up. You know, he says it's for grace you've been saved, and it's not through yourselves, it's the gift of God. And he brought us together. We was talking about race relations, you know, Ephesians 2. He, he made us one in Christ. He's not even addressing the color thing, which is ridiculous. He's much broader than yeah, that. Yeah, Jew and Gentile, all under the umbrella of Christ. He goes through the church, you know, in the in the the grace that had been administered to you, but it's also about the people doing the work, not necessarily the way in our churches where we view the paid guys doing the work. We Like they'd be, well, you worked yesterday, which you didn't even get paid for that. Mm. But no, you're inspiring in, by pointing people to Jesus to go out during the week That's in right. their homes and their schools and their neighborhoods and their job play and share Jesus. The people are doing the work during right. during the week. And so then... He talks about living as children of light. 
Ephesians 5, be imitators of God. He, I love the contrast of light and darkness. He makes this deal about don't get drunk on wine in Ephesians 5, but be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. You know, be high on Jesus in the Spirit. Well, then he has this marriage thing. People go to Ephesians 5 and talk about marriage. You know, I started this talk talking about marriage. But he said, oh, no, that's great. But I'm talking about being married to Christ. Yep. And then he comes all the way down after he talks about the kids and then the social roles of society. And he does all that. Talking about relationships. You know, you got husbands, wives in chapter five, children, and parents, six, and the social, uh, social makeup of the workplace in chapter six. And then he gets to the armor of God and he makes a, a statement that is so profound. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. We just spent three paragraphs talking about relationships. But it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And it only uh, makes sense uh, if you miss the fact that when Jesus, when we cover it over in John 12, uh, what, what shall I say? Save me from this hour? It's time for Satan to be crushed from Genesis 3.15. Someone from a woman, the seed of a woman, would crush Satan. So here he is, by my count, over 5,000 years earlier, the prediction was made. So here's Jesus. Father, save me from this hour. Is that what I should say? Nope. It was for this very reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And it sounded like thunder. And the voice from heaven said, oh, I have glorified you. This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now I'm here on the earth. Time for Satan to be crushed. Uh, now is the time for judgment on this world. Now, since I'm here, what I'm fixing to do, the prince of this world shall be driven out. I'm here to take care of Satan for you. I'm going to conquer him. Uh, he said, but when I am lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men to myself. He said this, so what kind of death? So by his death, he delivered us from Satan and proves it by being resurrected three days later. So when you begin Ephesians, the apostle Paul, he first tells you what you have. That power is like the working of his mighty strength. Know that you've been empowered by God's spirit because you came to Jesus, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, all there 24-7 to keep your cleansed, far above all rule and authority. So then he says, as for you, in lieu of the question was, how do we know we're armed? Well, know where you came from. As for you, this is all humanity. You were dead in your transgressions and sins. You're like, uh-oh. Everybody's out. No Savior. No, no remission of sins. Uh, it's not there. No resurrection. In which you used to follow, you're dead in your sins. When you used to live, when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, there's Satan, the spirit, powerful, who is now at work in those who are disobedient. But you made it out of it. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the craving of our sinful nature, following its desires and <clears throat> thoughts. We were by nature objects of wrath, but... Going back to John chapter 12, because of his great love for us, what am I going to do, Father? My hour has come. Yeah. Let's save him. Let's save him. Uh, but because of his great love for us, God, who's rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. Just by grace you've been saved. It's a free gift. By the time he gets from there over to the end, he said, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Your sins yeah. have been removed. You're guaranteed to be raised from the dead. He's at the right hand of the Father mediating for you. Everything's been covered, and I did it, and it's free of charge. 
but make sure you're aware that your yeah. enemy is still prowling around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. But Stay I'll, the course and don't back off because I've yeah. done it for you if you can keep it. Hang on, Joseph. Take a break. I think what's important about this, the reason we're stressing this, you're like, well, how come you're not talking about the armor of God? <laughs> because what we've illustrated the is... The Spirit of it, God is it, your armor. <laughs> it's not it's not your wife. You know, people, they sit down and say, boy, I got a pro-, you know, I'm not living for Jesus, but my wife, she's the problem. No, it, you know, or you got children and parents. And they're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's not, your struggle's not against flesh and, and blood. He, you're targeting... You know, the Holy Spirit is through the words of Paul. What the problem is, there's a bigger problem, and the real enemy is sin in our lives. And it's coming from the opposite of everything godly, which are the spiritual forces. The of evil. evil one. Now, we blame people. That's how you, you've heard the statement, well, you know, you love the sinner and hate the sin. But when you say that, that's a mouthful. Because most of the time, we just put them all together and say, I don't want anything to do with you. <laughs> and so when you get to the armor, I think, number one, the number one thought that stands out in this is these are people who are ready to go public for Jesus. And I mean go public in their home, in their workplace, where wherever they're at, in their marriage. I'm going to make Jesus the top party. Because when you do that, well, the spiritual forces of evil... They're, they're going to attack that. And all you got to do to test this, because a lot of, I've, I've had debates with people who don't believe it's our responsibility or God's using us to go out and share Jesus. They just, I've heard them say, well, it's just a private thing between you and God. Keep, and I'm your, like, keep your religion away from mainstream. Right. I'm like, well, why are we on the earth? What is the purpose? To me, that's the number two question. When I ask those three questions at that event, number two is why are we here? We all agree on how we got here as far as in the religious world. God made us. Well, why are we here? I believe we're here to point people to Jesus. Right. When you do that, there's going to be an attack. So he then, and a lot of people who disagree with that, I'm, I'm like, well, why do you need an armor? What, what's the If we're not supposed to go out there and do daring things, you know, much less in our home, but I'm... Why do we need armor? Well, you're, was, you're, <laughs> you're up against your enemy who's been destroyed for you, but he's still there, and you're like, uh, let's see, what's he famous for? Lies and murder. So, Well, and the, that was the core uh, point of my lesson yesterday from John 11. It's funny how it all kind of streams together, because if Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and he says, if you live for me, you'll never die, and even if you die, you're going to live for that's eternity. That's you live. Because you're going to raise you up. So yeah. if that's true... I said just what you just said, Jess. I We're playing out. We're just playing the clock out here, trying to point as many people to that as mm -hmm. possible. And I was like, people that don't understand that or know that, they don't realize they're following the evil one. Yeah. They're, they're just living out their little ideologies or whatever. They don't know what drives them. This you know? is yeah. why we, we say, what's the, what's the name of your podcast? Unashamed, <laughs> because you say, where'd that come from? Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel or it's the power of God. There's armor here. It's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness of God is revealed, and it's by faith. So when you look at that, you say, I just need to live by faith, and the enemy, my enemy, will never get gain back control of my life again. Right. And you notice how they, they graduate, like you get to 614, truth and then righteousness, yep. and then being ready to present the gospel, is what Jay said, with anybody that would ask. And then there's faith, and then there's a helmet of salvation, yep. there's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, yep. and then he says you want to well, pray, you know? Well, but, you know, and I it's have... It's all a, spiritual warfare. Well, well I have a little different take. I mean, I believe if our purpose is to share Jesus, despite your flaws or despite your personality or even your talents, there's different ways to share Jesus, as long as we, we got a job to do. That's right. So when I when I read with the belt of truth, well, I immediately think when that conversation with Pilate, when he said, what is truth, which I've always said, he was close, but he should have said who, because he was 
Jesus had just said in John 14, which we'll get to eventually, I am the truth. And so I'm like, I'm doing this in the name of Jesus with the belt of truth. And you look at what's next. It says the breastplate of righteousness, which is the grace of God teaches us to say no and to say yes to a lot of things. So when whatever situation you get into when you're sharing Jesus or out there, you have a responsibility to hunger and thirst for what's right. You want, you want, we want to do what's right because of who, who we are. And then you get to the next one, the feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel, which is obvious. It's one I'll say. And then in addition, take up the shield of faith. Well, Jesus is not going to tap you on the shoulder while you're doing this right. and say, hey, good job. It, it's hard to live out faith because faith being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we don't see. Because all you're going to do when you go into battle and you bring up Jesus or you bring up someone's life is it's going to get uncomfortable. And people always ask me, they're like, well, I, I can't be comfortable talking with other people's lives and getting in their business and talking about Jesus. And I'm like, perfect. I'm never comfortable doing that. <laughs> That's right. I would rather watch a football game. But I know that I'm going to trust God and we're going to do some spiritual war here. And I don't have all the answers, but I know who does. I'm going to point people to Jesus. It's going to ask, answer your three questions, which is how'd I get here? What am I doing here? And how am I leaving? You get those answered. What are we worried about? The rest of it doesn't matter. When you walk as Jesus did, that is your armor. Uh, no one who is born of God will continue to sin. He's talking about as a pattern. Your pattern will be walking in the light as Jesus did. God's seed remains in him, the Holy Spirit. He cannot go on sinning because he's been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. You say, how would you know? Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God as a pattern. Neither is anyone who does not love his brother. It's not complex. Your armor is you just do what's right and you love your brother. Yeah, I think a lot okay. of people have a hard time understanding that because they're like, well, I, how, but I've sinned, so I've disqualified. I don't share Jesus because I have sin in my life. You know, I'm waiting to get perfect before I can do it. Yeah. And don't misunderstand what he's reading. Jesus has made you perfect despite your past, your present, and Read your future. Read 1 John 1 and 2 and 3, and it, it, it helped me a lot. Uh, and and that's what person, part of right? living in the light is about, is that when we do mess up, we are honest and, you know, we get to the end about praying in the spirit on all occasions where you're communicating with what you're representing, which is what's different than Sunday morning Christianity versus people out there in the war. Everyone you see and you form any kind of relationship in 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or an hour, it does not take long, Al, to pretty well get a pretty good take on who I'm talking to. Is he a spiritual guy or is he, or is he up to no good? Right. It comes forth pretty quick. <clears throat> well, where I'm getting my view on this is when he gets down to verse 20 of Ephesians 6, he said, you know, he said, pray that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Yep. And to me, that's what it's all about. All these, there. all these weapons <clears throat> go back to the gospel in some capacity. Salvation, well, yeah, Jesus, Jesus is who saves us. Uh, you know, you know the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Jesus and the Bible, yes. I've run and, upon you know. a many one, Jason. Filth was coming out of their mouth, a lot of cursing, until I brought up Jesus and began to point them toward Jesus. And every time, they all of a sudden, the, the filthy language, it all dries up all right. quick. Well, because it's a great in a war. And I want to mention this one last thing. I know we're out of time. But it, in verse 20, it says, For which I am an ambassador in change. In chains, and so when you read Second Corinthians five, you realize that God is making an appeal through us. We're ambassadors. When you go out there and decide to represent Jesus in a public way, that in your is home or your that workplace, is your armor. Th yeah, God's providing all the weapons. Right. E everything. It's all coming from Him. <laughs> yep. You're just taking the stand because He says three times. Ta when the day of evil comes, well, when that. Probably today. Yep. If not, I know it's tomorrow. <clears throat> yep. But we're going to stand in Jesus and be purposeful in public, in private, for Jesus Christ. We're going to stumble as we go forth, but your overall life, the so, tenor uh, of your life. We're out of time, bro, and shame. Appreciate you guys watching. But I got one point I got to make, so we're going to do it overtime for those of you that have, um, that have in the woods. So 
appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.